session, uh, we discussed about the introduction about uh, Dart and Flutter, right? So in today's session, we're going to discuss about what is Flutter and uh, how to create and how to build our first project in the Flutter. So, okay, so coming to this session, uh, what is Flutter? So Flutter is a UI toolkit for building fast and uh, beautiful applications uh, on basing on single code base, okay? So by uh, writing a single code base, you can build both Android and uh, iOS applications. And it's open source and uh, free to use, okay? And it is developed by Google and uh, managed by ECMA standards. And this Flutter is mainly uh, developed the applications on Dart programming language. And this uh, Flutter is a framework which is introduced by the Google. Next. Uh, Today we are going to discuss about the material components in Flutter. So what are material components and uh, what are the types of material components and why those are used. So okay, uh, Flutter is an open source framework for building high performance uh, and beautiful mobile applications for both Android and iOS. So it will uh, build high performance uh, Android and iOS applications by basing on single code base. Okay. And Modern material components. The ready to use widgets are known as material components. So you can use the widgets uh, which I have which have already been created. So you can uh, use it uh, automatically, right? So very easily. So those are known as uh, material components. And material design is a design system that provides a unified experience across all platforms and devices. So it is based on the use of bold colors, typography, and edge to edge image to create a clean modern look and feel. So this material design, why this design is used? So to create a beautiful apps, like uh, adding colors, font styles, and some images, etc. So by using this material design, we can get uh, or create a modern look for our application. And there are some material components for Flutter and variety of widgets. So those are again classified as app bars, buttons, cards, dialogues, drawers, tabs, snack bars, and themes. So these are some uh, some different types of material components which are used uh, in a Flutter application. So which will uh, use a better performance and also a better look for our application. Okay. So we'll. Uh, discuss about what are those okay so coming to this app bars so what is an app bar so app bar is a material design widget so which is uh, provided on the top bar, uh, top app bar so in previous session i shown you the example for this app bar right so again also i'm going to show what is the app bar for a particular filter and in this app bar we consist of a text or some icons or some navigation links anything we can uh, place anything in this app bar widgets okay it is also comes under a widget okay next uh, buttons so buttons in which uh, buttons are also a type of widgets which are used for uh, link the pages in the uh, application and there are five types of buttons. Those are raised button, flat button, outline button, icon button, and drop down button. So these are the types of buttons and uh, we'll also overcome what are the what buttons uh, in our uh, further sessions. We can execute each button and uh, we can also see the outputs for these buttons, okay? So first of all, mainly we will use all these buttons in uh, every um, basic uh, Dart programming language. And coming to cards. So card is also a material design widget, so which represents a piece of information or a content. So coming to a general, what is a card? So card consists of an image and a heading uh, related to that image and a description and some uh, price or something like uh, we can see mainly cards in like uh, shopping applications like Amazon, etc. So you can see cards, etc. Right. So this is an example for the card. And coming to drawers. So mainly uh, this drawer is used as a navigation link. Like uh, if you uh, see in an application or in Chrome browser, you consist of a menu bar. So when you click on the menu bar or a menu icon, uh, the another pop-up will be occurred. So that is known as simply drawers. So you can see that the different types of links which navigates those links from one page to the another page so okay this is simply noise drawers and here you can see the demo program for the drawers in flutter 
so here he used about the class my home page extend stateless widget so this is a class name and here i placed an override and here app bar so here app bar title i have given as my app so my app is my uh, app app name and i created a drawer and in that i created a color blue and a text as header and i given some styles like a white color and the font size as 24 and i linked it to the home page of the app bar so that you can see the navigation uh, i mean menu icon in the in your home page okay next coming to tabs so what are the tabs so tabs are the common ui elements that allows users to navigate uh, between different pages or sections so i am also going to show the example for the tabs after this presentation so you may get uh, some idea related to what is the tab okay so the demo program for the tab is so here you can see the class my home page extends stateless widget so it is a class name uh, we have also discussed in previous session about two types of widgets uh, stateless widgets and uh, stateful widgets so in further sessions we will also discuss briefly about these widgets okay now i placed uh, app bar and bottom tab bar as and i given uh, two tabs tab one and tab two and i given text for that is tab demo so my app name is tabs demo and body in the body i given the body color as red and the container color the container is the one where uh, this app bar is, um, I mean, this tabs container right now, this uh, tabs uh, will be placed in the container and inside the container, the color is given as blue. Okay, this is the basic program uh, for the tabs in Flutter. And plus, snack bar is a temporary message that appears at the bottom of the screen and provides the lightweight feedback to the user. So it will, uh, when a user enter to your app, or an uh, application which will uh, using the flutter so the snack bar is the property uh, where it displays the temporary message for the user in a lightweight uh, feedback okay so it can be implemented by the scaffold method okay and you can customize the appearance and behavior of the snack bars by changing the properties of snack bar widget so snack bar widget uh, is a widget where you can give the temporary message which is appeared in the bottom of the screen and you can also customize the appearance and uh, the behavior and uh, everything uh, properties according to your uh, brand okay next coming to this is the basic demo program for this snack bar so here here i have created a class my page and a stateless widget and inside that i given a uh, app name as a snack bar example and body as center and when the button is clicked i will place the raised button when the button is pressed the snack bar will be occurred with a particular message snack bar message like a pop-up will be occurred so when you click on the raised button the pop-up will occur and uh, the snack bar message will be displayed in it so this is the basic program for the snack bar in the flutter and coming to themes so themes in flutter allow you to define a consistent look and feel for your apps such as color palette typography and visual style so okay, these themes are mainly used uh, to give a uh, attractive look for android applications or ios applications by building users in a flutter okay by adding colors and different types of uh, pictures or font styles typography etc so you can create a theme by using a theme widget and specifying the desired theme data so you can uh, upload or you can create themes by using the themes widget okay and you can uh, you can uh, upload or you can design uh, themes according to your uh, particular uh, brand okay and coming to this is the program on the themes in flutter so i have created uh, so you can see here a theme data object can be accessed from any widget within the theme. So the theme data which is being present, right? So it can be accessed from anywhere. So you can see the example, right? So here I given class my extend stateless widget and I created a context or a data related to the uh, theme. I created a theme data here. So by giving primary search. So primary search means you can uh, give uh, primary search is nothing but the background color of your whole particular app. So, okay, I given blue color as a whole particular background color and another color as red and I given a headline textile as a font size 24 and font weight should be bold. Okay, and uh, it has been all changes in my homepage. 
So these are all changes and all st styles and fonts will be applied in my home page. And I created another uh, page, uh, my home page action stateless widgets. And I given here scaffold and app bar name as app name as my app. And now I created a body and I given that body in a center and I given a word called hello world. And I linked this uh, data of the theme into this second class. So it can be accessed the data from first class, okay, uh, by using uh, some method, okay. I think you got some idea related to this theme program, okay. Next, uh, coming to the material design. So we discussed about the material components, right? There are uh, six to seven types of material components. So we discussed about them briefly. And now coming to the material design in Flutter. So why these material designs are used and what are the use of and the requirement of the material design. So material design is a language developed by Google and you can uh, place uh, many types of libraries like uh, setting up UI widgets and uh, like placing buttons, text fields, slides and more. So by this material design, you can add these all the features, okay? And the material library in Flutter provides a consistent look and feel for your app across different platforms, including Android and iOS. So in material design, it consists of a material library. So which consists a beautiful look for your app. It may be Android or iOS. So this material design is implemented by using the material libraries. So it also provides features like responsive design and uh, beautiful UI and uh, screen size and resolutions. So the some features of the material library are responsive and this all. And next, to use the material library in Flutter, you need to wrap up your app material app widget around your scaffold widget. So what is scaffold? So scaffold is a basic structure for your app. So when you open an app, it consists of an app bar and bottom navigation bar and a floating action button. So what is app bar, what is floating action button and what is this and what is scaffold and what is basic structure? You are going to see now after execution of our first uh, project in the Flutter, okay? In, in Flutter, material design is implemented as a set of widgets that follow material design guidelines. So these widgets provide a way to create visual, attractive and easy to use interfaces. And these material designs are implemented in such a way that you can easy to use and ready to use. Okay. These can be implemented very easily and they are fully customizable by the developers. So there are no restrictions that uh, the available designs are only to be used. You can uh, Customize according to your brand and you can customize colors, you can, you can customize button and sizes, everything. So it's depending upon the developer, okay. And the material design widgets in Flutter includes buttons, text fields, sliders and many more other common interface elements. As well as a bottom navigation bar, app bar and uh, nav links, drawers, etc. And snack bars also. And overall, material design in Flutter provides a powerful and flexible framework for creating beautiful and user-friendly apps. So it will uh, create a flexible framework. I mean, it will uh, create uh, beautiful and user-friendly apps by using this material design. So the look will be uh, much more beautiful compared without using the material design. And it has become a popular choice for developers building apps for Android, iOS and other platforms. So without uh, material design, uh, no Android app or iOS app can be built uh, much more beautiful, okay? And now coming to the networking in Flutter. So material design is the part where you can uh, design the front end for the app. And networking in Flutter means uh, it's completely coming up to the back end, okay? So networking in Flutter refers to the process of sending and receiving the data over a network connection. So by the networking, you can send the data or you can receive the data from the uh, some server or uh, anything, okay. So this can be involved or it can be implemented by HTTP server, okay. The HTTP uh, requests, not server, sorry. And two APIs downloading and uploading data are using web sockets for real-time com communication. So to perform networking in Flutter, you can use a variety of libraries and plugins. So there is a networking in Flutter, so to, use the networking, we have consist of many libraries and plugins. So what are those plugins and libraries? So for example, take a dart.io library, it is a library. 
which provides a low level access to network protocols so this data io uh, is uh, providing low level access to network protocols or the popular http package and now consist uh, take consider http package http package will provides a high level api for making http requests okay next coming to this is uh, some code that makes a simple get so here you can see uh, a program related to a http package so here i placed an import package http slash http dot dot okay and i given uh, some a code future void fetch data and final response is equal to await and uh, i given a url example dot com api slash data and if the response is equal to some value then it will be going to print the response if failed and it is uh, going to print its fail i also discussed about this a uh, dollar sign it's uh, it is a string value we have already discussed in previous sessions and uh, here in this code the fetch data function is defined as async meaning what is the fetch data meaning it returns a future that represents the eventual result operation it will uh, represents the results of an operations and uh, this await keyword is used to wait for a response from the api before continuing with the rest of the code so this await is a keyword which waits for the response uh, should get from the api before continuing to the another code okay next this is another slide so flutter also provides support for web sockets which allows for real time communication so networking also provides the web sockets and uh, this is mainly used for communication between the client and the server okay na uh, for example you can use the flutter web socket package to connect to web uh, socket and send and receive messages in real time so by using this web socket you can send and receive messages from the real time and you can also communicate between the client and the server so overall the networking is an important aspect of many flutter apps and the variety of libraries and plugins available make it easy to perform so overall at the last of the discussion the networking is a a back end operation which is performed in the flutter with the help of http requests uh, by sending and receiving the data from the real time uh, servers and it consists of the web sockets where it can communicate between the client and the server next come into the http package so http package in flutter is used to make http requests and handle the responses so this package provides an easy way to send and receive uh, easy way to send http requests and receive the http responses so it is used both get and post requests so it will be run on get and post requests okay and http dot get function is used to make a get request to the specified url okay next coming to the json in flutter so json so javascript object notation it is a lightweight data interchange format that is easy for humans to read and write and easy for machines to parse and generate so it is easy to humans to read and write this uh, data and also for the machines to generate so it is a standard format exchanging data between the clients and the server so in flutter you can use the json package to encode and decode the json data it is important to note json only supports a limited set of data types so json is not supported for all the data types it only supported for the some data types like uh, such as numbers strings and booleans and it will not support some custom classes so json is not supported for some custom classes it only uh, supported for some data types such as the uh, numbers strings and booleans and coming to this is the example code how to encode and decode the json data in front so i have given the import data dot convert, uh, convert and i given variable and name as john and email and age and i given string so here uh, the string is um, one of the data type where the json is uh, can encode and decode so i give i place a string json string is equal to json dot encode map so okay this is some uh, basic program and you can uh, can know more about the backend in further sessions okay now coming to the serialization in flutter so serialization refers to the process of converting an object state to a string so it converts the object state uh, object state to the string so which can be uh, restored uh, later okay it can uh, restore the data in the later in the context of flutter serialization is often used to store an object state in a file or send it over a network so the serialization is mainly used to store the object state 
in a file in a particular file and it's sent to the network after some time or later serialization in flutter refers to the process of converting an object state into a format that can be stored transmitted or reconstructed at a later time so serialization in flutter so what the serialization do in this flutter so it convert the object state into a format and it can be stored and it can uh, transmitted or reconstructed at later time okay the main goal of the serialization is to preserve the state of an object between the different executions of the applications so this is a example program for the serialization in flutter so i given i import that con convert and the class user as final string name and final int age so user this dot name and this dot age i am calling the name and the age and i am uh, uploading this to json uh, name and age now static user from json map string and dynamic uh, return user so name dot json name so this will be going to be stored in the uh, json okay the name and the age will be going to be stored in the particular file and it going to uh, recreate it or it can be sent after some particular time and there are two types of serializations in flutter so those are json serialization and custom serialization and coming to the firebase in front of so firebase is the main important topic and uh, interesting topic in the flutter so what is firebase and how it is being used so firebase is a mobile and web application development platform developed by google so this firebase is also developed by google this firebase is used for, yeah this firebase is also a type of a backend operation which will conduct the backend operations okay it will store and uh, retrieve the data of the particular user so the main task that performed by the firebase is it will store the data of the users and it will send the data of the particular user and every data will be stored in a particular back uh, backend in the firebase firebase provides a number of services including real time database cloud firestore authentication cloud storage etc there are many types of services which are provided uh, provided by the firebase not only authentication so authentication is mainly used for login and uh, sign up forms uh, where the data is being collected uh, from the user to the firebase and it will be stored according to the uh, details and to run this firebase in the flutter you have to download the firebase sdk the combination of firebase and flutter can be provide a powerful platform for developing the mobile applications so when you combine the both firebase and flutter it will give the powerful platform so just take an example if you build an application example a shopping application so you have developer only front end like uh, uh, posts and some card with images and cards like uh, applying the data and like header description price images etc so if a user buy a particular product and purchased so to track the details it should uh, you should use the firebase so to so track the particular user details or uh, billing address and everything should be stored in the back end right so without storing the data how can we uh, run a app on basing on the front end so the back end is mainly useful so that firebase is the better option to use so firebase is used uh, to store the data like address it may be mobile number it may be anything so it is uh, also used for verification processes and store the data and everything and by using the firebase service in flutter the developers can add features such as real time data synchronization user authentication and cloud storage to the applications so these are some features which are done by the firebase in the real time uh, processes and additionally firebase also provides a number of tools for analyzing the user behavior and tracking the app performance so the firebase is also not only used for authentic uh, to collect the data and to retrieve the data it is also used for track the app performance so i have created a flutter app and you have linked it to the firebase and the firebase will also track the how the app is performing is there any issues or any things we have to update so it will track the app performance so that the developer can uh, improve the app according to the progress okay next firebase in flutter okay in order to use firebase in flutter developers need to install the firebase underscore core 
and other relevant Firebase plugins. So this is the main thing to install the Firebase after installing the Firebase SDK. So Firebase underscore core is to be used to install the Firebase plugins or libraries, etc. And this is some basic introduction regarding this Firebase. We can uh, discuss more that in about the Firebase in the further sessions. So now we are going to discuss how to install the uh, Flutter SDK and how to set up the Flutter and everything. So to do that, just uh, open your Chrome browser and simply uh, search for Flutter. Okay. Simply search for Flutter. And here is the first link, right? Flutter.dev. So come to this website. So here you can see this is the official website of the Flutter where you can build apps from any screen. Okay. So here you can see some samples of the Flutter uh, applications. And Flutter transforms the app development process, build, test, and deploy the beautiful mobile and, web and desktop uh, based on the single code base. So, okay. So, the Flutter is fast, productive, and flexible. And coming to this, uh, these are some Dart samples. So, you can, uh, before uh, starting this Flutter, you have to uh, have some knowledge about the Dart. So, next, uh, this Flutter is mainly consists of a Dart program and it is structured by many people and it is also see how google pay uses flutter to change the world of mobile payments and the mainly flutter is mainly used by google uh, mgm resorts next toyota ebay bmw dream Eleven, ema etc so these are uh, some platforms which are uh, using the flutter for the projects etc and it is supported by google and open source for everyone and it's free to use and coming to this, these are some uh, latest news or some blogs related to the Flutter. If you are much more interested, you can uh, refer to these uh, articles. And here you can uh, join the newsletter uh, for recent updates uh, for, uh, of the Flutter. So how to install Flutter? So simply click on Get Started here. So after clicking on Get Started, so you'll get this uh, screen. So where you can see four types, uh, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and uh, Chrome OS. So I am using Windows, so I will just click on Windows. There are some system requirements. So Windows should be 10 and 64 bit, and disk space should be 1.64 GB. And these are some tools, okay? So this is the latest version of the Flutter SDK 3.7.3. So simply just uh, click on download. So this will, uh, this file is uh, about uh, 876 MB, right? So I have already downloaded this, so I will uh, cancel this uh, download. And after download, it will uh, show in download space, right? So simply come to the downloads. And here the file will be saved, right? Now come to the desktop and uh, exit, uh, extract that particular uh, file, right? This Flutter Windows 3.7.3 stable zip, right? So after downloading this file, just simply open your C disk, uh, C drive. Uh, coming to the this PC and this C drive, and create a source folder here. So here you can see the source folder, right? So create a source folder in uh, some local disk or anything. So create a source folder and open this. So unzip your. So this is my uh, previous uh, old version of the Flutter. So. I, I use it uh, 3.7.0 for execution in these programs. Now the latest version is 3.7.3. So this is the Flutter Windows uh, SDK. So just simply extract this folder in SRC. So after extracting it, this is the output how it will get. So Flutter, uh, go into the Flutter folder and just simply open bin and copy this path, right? So copy this path and open Windows and search for PC and go to properties after going to properties you can see advanced system settings right side so after clicking on this you will get the this type of pop-up system properties so simply go to the environmental variables and here you can see the path right so click on edit and i have already pasted my uh, path here already so to create a new thing you can uh, simply create a new and you can paste it here and you can okay so I, I have already created, right? Okay. After pasting that, click on OK, OK, and OK. So after pasting the path, how can you know that the path is correctly set or not? So to do that, 
simply click on Windows R. So open command prompt and simply type Flutter Doctor. So simply type as Flutter Doctor. If the Flutter is being installed, uh, the output will be occurred like this. So the versions will be checked by the uh, compiler. And this is these are the outputs after placing my SDK in this environmental variables. So here the vendor version is updated, Android uh, toolchain is being updated. So Android toolchain is nothing but uh, after installing the Android Studio, we have to set up some process, right? So that is, uh, this is the Android Studio, right? Next Chrome, uh, Chrome is also being updated. And this Visual Studio of the Microsoft is not necessary because uh, we are going to uh, deploy this uh, our, um, output in uh, Chrome web extensions. So I will not prefer this Visual Studio and it will be becoming much more burden to download. And uh, this is an Android Studio, it's not necessary. And VS Code should be updated and connected uh, devices are three. So what are the connected devices are also I'm going to show. And this is the HTTP host to receive and get the data. So after copying the part, this is uh, the process how to check the Flutter is being installed or not. Now how to create a first Flutter project. So to do that, uh, I will simply come to the desktop and I will open my Visual Studio code. So simply open the Visual Studio code. So that um, after that, uh, simply create, uh, open a folder. I think I have already created a folder for this uh, Flutter sessions. So I have created a folder in desktop. So Flutter. So I'm going to create a uh, new folder. In that new folder I'm going uh, so Flutter 2, okay. So I'm going to select this folder. So select a new folder and this is the interface after uh, selecting a folder. Okay. Now, how to create a first project, uh, Flutter project in this Visual Studio code? So, simply click on Control Shift plus P. So, Control Shift plus P. So, this is the uh, pop up you will be occurred. So, I already told you uh, make sure to install the Flutter and Dart extensions. So, when you install the Flutter and Dart extensions, these two will be. Um, Observe here, so Flutter new project and Dart new project. So uh, motto is to create a Flutter new project, right? So click on Flutter new project. So after clicking the Flutter new project, you can see here uh, these types. So application, application empty, module, package, plugin, skeleton. So now we are creating an application. So just simply click on application. So after clicking an application, it will ask uh, to uh, select a folder. So our particular folder is Flutter 2, right? So uh, select a particular folder to execute your particular application. So I'm giving a name, Flutter. Okay. So this is the application name which I have been given. After giving the application name, so it takes some time to create uh, the files in this particular folder. So these are the files which are being occurred. So dot idea, Android, iOS. So this Android and iOS. So these are the two platforms where, uh, so this is the one main dot dot. So this is the code area where you are going to type your code here. And this code is being executed uh, in both Android and iOS platforms according to the compatible versions and everything. So these are uh, Linux, Mac OS, and these are related to the Linux and Mac OS, okay? Uh, like uh, LIB is related to the windows okay now these are some uh, folders mainly we use only main dot dot and also pop specs dot yaml so why this pop specs yaml is used so this is used to update the dependencies so let us suppose if you are uh, creating a particular uh, font size or font weight or a font style where you are exporting it from the google so you have already copied a particular font style from the Google and you have already pasted the URL or some font style in this program. After pasting that particular style, you may get an error because why the error is overcome. So in this popspec.yml, so here you can see the version, SDK and everything. So dependencies like SDK, Flutter 
and everything you can see here so to update like adding images so here you can see to add assets to your application add an asset section link these assets so here you can see the comment right so if you want to add an image or any text or anything in your flutter application so you have to add that particular path in this pubspec.yaml so that it can be directly linked to your main dot dot file okay so there will be no errors after so for everything which you are going to copy from the outside environment you have to insert it into the uh, pubspec.yaml so that the errors will not be occur so everything like uh, images if you place an image in this uh, main dot dot if you link an image here we have to uh, give the path of a particular image where that image is being located. So we have to give the path of a particular image here and we have to uh, give the same path here so that uh, the error will not be occur. So this is the basic explanation regarding this uh, folders and uh, what is dot uh, yml. So this is the basic program of the dot. So when you create every uh, file uh, of the dot uh, flutter, this is the basic program which is being generated. And after I, you can remove these comments, these are unnecessary. It's uh, up to you. You may also. So, this is the primary search we have already discussed before, right? In uh, some teams, right? Uh, primary search has color blue. So, how to execute this program? So, you have to save this program. And here you can see in order to run your application, type command uh, cd, flutter, and, and these all. So, to execute this program, simply come to here run and start debugging so here you can see start debugging and wait a minute here you can see right one device is connected so here click on this and here you can uh, see windows chrome and edge so these are the three uh, connected devices we have already seen in command prompt right three connected devices here you can see so three connected devices available so these are the connected devices and now we can execute our output in the chrome web so, so here you can may occur the error because you can unable to find the Visual Studio. So if you want uh, to execute this in the desktop version, here you will get an uh, emulator like Android emulator and you can uh, see the code in this Android emulator. So to do that, in order to have to uh, install this Visual Studio Microsoft. So without installing that, we can also execute the programs. So simply uh, by clicking on this Chrome web. So click on Chrome web and here you can uh, see the Chrome web JavaScript. So after getting this, simply click on again F5. So it takes some time. Here you can see the hot restart. So this hot restart is mainly used um, after creating or launching of this particular project in another window. If you uh, create or uh, make any changes here, you can uh, directly uh, see those changes by create, uh, clicking on this restart. So I will also show how to use this restart button, etc. So wait a minute, it takes some time to debug the code and uh, to open it another window. So this is the basic program. So you can see the output, how it is being. So it takes some time. So uh, here you can uh, see the class, my class app extends stateless widget. And here you can see the title of the particular app as Flutter demo and I given color as blue. So here you can see the output is being generated. So here you can see our folder name called dust. Okay. So yeah. This is the basic program. So this is the basic program when you create a, a Flutter project. This is the basic program which is being occurred. And this is the starting output of the Flutter. So this is the uh, first Flutter app which is being built. So here you can see the floating button. So which increments the value. So how many times you click on this button, the value should be increased. Okay. So this is the Flutter demo homepage. You can also... Uh, change this by clicking here you see it here flutter demo home page you can also change it so i will do as flutter forward and i'm going to save it and after saving it here you can see performing hot restart so this hot restart is mainly used after saving it it will uh, restart uh, the changes here the restarted application is 7. 
I mean, 7,781, I guess. So the application is being restarted successfully. So how to see that? So here you can see that uh, the output is being generated Flutter forward. And you can also change this Flutter demo. You can give your own name. I am going to remove this one and I am going to save this. And again, automatically the hot restart will perform. And you can see uh, the output, wait a minute. Yeah, Flutter forward. Okay. And this is the debug is a uh, uh, watermark. You can uh, make, uh, look it as a watermark and debug. Uh, that can be removed by uh, debug show checked banner mode. So click on this and make it as false. So by this command, uh, here you can see the debug, right? Before uh, you can see the debug. Now you, uh, the debug will be uh, disappeared. So before uh, here you uh, saw some debug. So by using this uh, debug show checked banner false, uh, the banner will be disappeared. Okay, this is the basic program uh, for the Flutter. And now uh, we can, uh, I told you what is the app bar and what is, I told you, I will show you none. So this is the app bar. So this is the app bar and this is the title of the app bar. And uh, you can also mention the navigation links and everything. So I will perform a code lab uh, now. So once I will explain about one code lab uh, regarding this material design, so you may get uh, an idea regarding that. So for that, simply uh, visit uh, Google Chrome and type uh, DC code labs flutter. So after typing as MDC code lab flutter, here you can see the MDC 102 Flutter. So this is the code labs where you can uh, perform your Flutter code labs. Here you can get everything about uh, building of app. He will give um, this code lab will perform uh, some instructions and you can develop the app regarding that application. So this is the application which you are going to build in this session. So in the uh, in the next session we can uh, discuss about. Uh, some other code labs so this is the basic thing which we are going to discuss so click on next simply so this is the setup process where you have to do for the flutter development environment now uh, to do that you have to install the flutter sdk and uh, visual show editor right so sdk should be installed and also edited to use the code and click on next and download this uh, app okay download this file into your uh, computer or a laptop so you can directly upload that folder okay i have already created but i will show the output right wait a minute so i have already created a folder and i have also been executed so i will show you so i have created labs folder in the labs um yeah one or two right so select folder the folder is being open So here you can see app dot dot home dot dot login dot dot and main dot dot. So how this output is going to be, I will also. So before that, uh, please uh, follow these instructions. Right, this is the first output. Output how you can uh, view here. So this is the login and sign up page. So this is login and sign up is just front end. To work it as a back end, you should as a uh, add a Firebase to it. So simply click on next. So to add a top bar app, you have to click this uh, to this instruction. So in home, add an app bar to the scaffold and remove the highlighted constant. So I have added this uh, home dot. Yeah, here yeah, you can uh, wait a minute. So I will show where I have been pasted it. So here you can see right written uh, scaffold under app bar and the title as flutter forward and uh, some actions. So why these actions are being placed? You are all cover this, uh, why these actions and uh, what is the use of these actions and how uh, these can be implemented. You can all uh, learn by, uh, by these instructions. Simply follow these uh, instructions and you can uh, create a basic application. So now I will show the how the output is going to be. 
so just simply click on F5. So it takes some time to launch the project. If you follow uh, the instructions given by here, so there is every instruction for the every output. Here you can see the sh uh, shrine and uh, some navigation uh, menu icon. Okay, this is the menu icon. I have discussed like drawers, right? When you click on this, the pop-up will be occurred. So that is known as uh, similarly drawers, okay? So this is the app top bar and uh, how to add an action to a particular thing. And you can add actions to that. Here you can see the search bar and some customization uh, symbol. And this is the uh, how to add a top app bar. And coming to next, how to add a card. So how to add a card to, uh, to your uh, particular application. So this is how you can uh, copy this body. And you have to place in this uh, particular comment. So where this comment will be occurred, you can uh, paste that body at that particular place. So now we can see the output here. So it is being generated. So yeah, this is the output of a particular code which is being downloaded from the code lab. And the file, the source file which is being downloaded is a normal file. And to build this application, you have to follow the particular instructions which is given in that code lab, okay? So simply click on next. So there is nothing to give the username or password because uh, no Firebase or backend is being connected to this. So simply click on next. So here you can see uh, flutter forward and some uh, menu, uh, I mean, menu icon and some here search bar icon you can see. And here you can see some images and uh, some text. These are nothing but the card where you can see the image and the heading of the particular image and uh, the price of the particular image. And uh, you can scroll down. So these are some uh, different types of uh, cards which are being placed in this particular app. Not only these images, you can also place your uh, different types of images. So before uh, adding these images uh, differently, so simply you have to visit this uh, obspec.yal. So here you can see, so here you can see that images, right? So packages slash shrine images 01, so 102345. So if you remove this image from here, from this dot .yaml, in this output, the error will be occurred. So the image which you have removed from this dot .yaml, the image will not occur here, okay? So every image which you are going to be uploaded in the login dot or uh, home or main or app dot dot. So every image which you are going to add, it may be new image or it may be old image or uh, maybe image that is given by the code lab. So you have to uh, upload first in dot .yaml and then you have to link this uh, path to that particular folder or a particular screen, okay? So this is the basic uh, project which is uh, you can build by using a code lab. So just sim uh, simply uh, follow these instructions. So follow these instructions and uh, paste those uh, this code according to the comments. And uh, here it will, uh, he will be given like uh, replace the center in the body of the scaffold with the grid view and uh, place it before the add dot grid view. So every these uh, these comments will be present in in the particular code which is given by the code lab. So okay, simply paste this code and you can uh, get the output. Okay. So after creating this, uh, you can also access to the next code labs. And in next sessions, we can uh, uh, discuss about this code labs in detail. We can uh, take a new file and we can download a new file and uh, we will follow the instructions and we will uh, create an application in this session live, okay? So this is some uh, demo examples of this uh, MDC. And we can also, samples okay uh, related to that uh, come to documents so what's new here you can see samples and tutorials uh, coming to this uh, samples i told you uh, app bar right so app bar, yeah let us take uh, this example isolate example so here you can see uh, an isolate example, right? 
So here isolate example refers uh, to an app bar title. And here you can see uh, tabs, performance tab, Infinix process, and data transfer. So these are the tabs of a particular app. So here you can switch the tabs. Uh, for example, uh, you can uh, see in every app the tabs are mandatory. So many of the apps use these uh, tabs. If you want to uh, simply uh, execute or simply want this code to be executed, simply click on the source code and you can download the code. Okay. So this is the following way to uh, explain about this. And this is the another example for the JSON. So JSON example here. So here it consists of a list of ints. So it consists of list of ints, list of strings, list of doubles, and list of dynamics. And uh, here it consists of a data, okay? And also tabs and uh, an app bar title. So this is some samples where you can uh, see different types of samples according to this. And you can also uh, see the navigations and buttons and also some code books, okay? So you can see, uh, refer all these code books where you can uh, clarify your doubts, okay? So this is the basic process and everything which is related to this. And this is the Flutter project app uh, front end, okay? Here you can uh, create a card and also images. And you can also create this application by following the particular instructions in the dark code lab okay so in the next session we can uh, build this uh, dart application like another application so same application we can change colors we can change colors we can change the buttons images and card styles and also we can uh, build different types of applications right in, from the next session so for this session uh, make sure to try this uh, design by following the instructions uh, given by the code lab the MDC code lab. So this is the end of the session for today. Uh, is there any doubts you can ask? So is there any doubts you can ask freely? So for the next session, we can uh, see the sam uh, some more samples and we can also, uh, we can uh, access some MDC. Uh, this is one or two, right? We can also see some 103, 104, and we can also perform some code labs on that in detail. So this is uh, how to create a Flutter project and how to uh, install the Flutter SDK and how to set the path and how to complete the code labs by following the instructions. Is there any doubts regarding this session? Okay, thank you. The uh, next session will be.